Hey YouTube, it's Nyam Nappy and I'm back for another Tip Tuesday. Now this week we are going to be talking about preservatives and while this may not be the video you want, this is the video you need because we are making DIY hair and skin and body products on my page and so I want to make sure that we are preserving our products properly. Plus y'all, I've been getting a lot of questions in my DMs and my comments asking me, can I use vitamin E as a preservative? Can I use glycerin as a preservative? Or do I even have to use a preservative so i feel like i really need to address this to make sure you guys are keeping safe and making sure we are not putting um, molds and bacteria on our hair skin and body because this is really really important for our overall health okay so in this video we're going to be talking about three main things the first thing we're going to talk about is why we need to use a preservative the second part is when do we need to use a preservative and then the last part i'm going to give you five preservatives and why you should investigate them further and if you guys actually really like this video you have a lot of questions about this i'll do a part two of it but if not if this is sufficient then we'll just leave it at that so make sure you guys are subscribed to my content my channel because not only do i do videos like this where we kind of talk about the science behind things but i teach you about how to make diy hair products especially during quarantine and a lot of us don't um necessarily want to go out and and buy products so we can make them in our house so let's learn how to preserve them properly so let's go ahead and get started okay Okay, so why do we need a preservative? Well, preservatives are essential so that microbes such as bacteria, fungus, mold, and yeast don't grow in any of our hair, skin, and body products. So preservatives actually stop the growth of the spores or the microbes from forming, or they kill the bacteria once it starts to form. So you don't have, that way you don't have molds or anything growing in your products over time by using these preservatives. So now when do we need a preservative? Well, really we need a preservative anytime there is an aqueous um, substance or water-based substance in our products. So it's not just water and I wanna be very specific. It is um, anytime we have distilled water, we have aloe vera, whether it's the juice or the gel, um, we have florals or hydrosols or even our teas, we need to make sure that we are preserving products that contain those water-based products. And not only that, if a product has the potential to um, get moisture or water into the product, for instance, if you like to leave your products in your restroom, so like for instance, maybe your shea butter or your, your whipped butters or your oils or your scrubs in the restroom, and there's a lot of moisture in the restroom from when we shower and stuff, or maybe you like to dip your wet hands, you wanna scoop your wet hands into products and put it over your body and you're cross contaminating and because the water actually is adding in microbes and bacteria into your products. So the only products that really don't need a preservative are anhydrous products. So anhydrous products means products that are similarly only oil or butter based with no water, no, with no water added. So the good thing with um, preservatives is there's actually multiple types of preservatives. There are some preservatives that can be used for anhydrous products or just butter only products. There's um, preservatives that can be used for the aqueous products or only water only products. Then there are the broad spectrum preservatives. And these are the ones we definitely wanna use when we are making our DIY emulsions. And that's when we do that oil and water phase, when we blend that together, we force that emulsion together. When we mix those products together, that can form a lot of bacteria. So we definitely want to make sure a preservative is added. And this is where I'm going to jump right into our five preservatives. Now, the thing I want to tell you is there's, of course, natural preservatives and then there's synthetic preservatives. And now, of course, someone who is into all natural DIY hair products, we want to use natural preservatives. But I don't want to just bash the synthetic ones because there is a reason why synthetic ones are on the market today and it's not simply because they're easier to produce right the reason that a lot of synthetic product synthetic preservatives um, are around is because they can kill a wider and broader range than our natural preservatives are um, so they're usually more they can kill more yeast and bacteria and fungus and all that with synthetic now the problem with synthetic ones is of course they usually add some other ingredients that may be formaldehyde releasers, um, or sometimes they have parabens in it. But I, again, I don't wanna necessarily just bash that because understanding that preservatives are used in such a small, small amount in our products. We're usually talking about 0.5% to 1% of our final product. 
but I don't want to neg negate that, you know, because some people still say, you know, I don't want that. And that's completely up to you. So I'm going to list actually five preservatives. I'm going to list four of them that are natural and one that is synthetic. So I want you to take the time if you like to, to familiarize yourself with some of these. You'll start to see me use more um, than the ones you've seen in my videos as I experiment with them themselves. So let's just jump right into these particular preservatives. And the first one is Optifin or Optifin Plus. Now, I really, really loved Optifin. It was the first preservative I ever um, was introduced to. It's an all natural preservative and it's usually used at a range between pH of four to pH eight. So definitely make sure you check, check your products before you put a preservative in to make sure that it can um, <laughs> preserve that particular product that you have. Um, the thing, the only thing about Optifin, and I can really speak to this because I've used this extensively, is that it can destabilize your emulsions, which means that that emulsion that we do with the oil and water process to bind it together, if it's not a very stable emulsion, emul emulsion, <laughs> um, it can cause a bit of separation, all right? So it can be real funny, real finicky. So that's why I know some people really love it and some people don't. Um, some people have learned you need to use a stronger emulsion with it, um, different things to make it work better, okay? And that's the thing with preservatives, you're gonna have to play around with it. I'll be trying to show you different ones as I continue on my journey as well, okay? So the next preservative, and I actually, I actually use this preservative as well, it's actually in my oat and aloe gel, is NeoGuard or GeoGuard. And this is also a natural preservative as well. It is effective at a pH around or below pH 5. Also a really great broad spectrum preservative. Another one is phenoxyethanol. It's also a natural preservative used between the pH of 3 to 10. Um, there's another one called GeoGuard 221. That's also another natural preservative used between pH 2 to pH 6. And then finally, the synthetic one that I've seen a lot of people use um, is called Liquid Germal Plus. Now this one does contain a small amount of a formaldehyde releaser, but is effective between pH of three to pH of eight and is really, really effective. It's actually on the list of killing all of the things such as gram-negative bacteria, gram-positive bacteria, mold, fungus, all of that, it checked and cleared on all of those. So definitely do your research on um, these products. Okay, you guys, so finally, I wanna address one thing that I get a lot of questions about. Is the use of vitamin E or grapeseed extract or other extracts to preserve our products? Now, those particular ingredients are actually antioxidants, and what they're used for is to help our butters and oils from going rancid quicker, but they're not enough to preserve our products fully, so you can't use them, especially when we're making our DIY emulsions to um, preserve the product, to think that they're going to actually kill bacteria and mold from growing. They only help to extend the shelf life of oils. So finally, I wanna just address the question that was asked to me by someone who wants to know if they could use glycerin as a preservative in a product. Now, I answered her no because in the product that I used, the glycerin rate was not high enough to preserve the product. So glycerin can be used particularly in certain products and I could definitely send you a link of information about that, but you have to use it in a very, very high amount, higher than anything I've ever used in any of my DIY products. And it makes the product completely sticky. The point of it is almost to actually help the emulsion form. And since I actually have an emulsifier for that, I do not add glycerin in that high of a rate. Um, so if you guys do have any questions about that, please definitely leave them down below. If you guys seem to have a lot of questions on similar topics, I'll make a part two to this video. But if you guys feel that this is sufficient enough, just let me know and I'll end the video right here for you guys. Um, I'll also insert the INCI names of these products. It's basically um, the other name that these products can be called because I know in certain countries, they may not be called Optifin Plus. They may be used by their other name. So I'll also leave that down in the comment section, you guys. And I'm gonna really, really try hard to update my blog. As you guys know, I have started my my business so I have been extremely extremely 
busy but I'm gonna try and work on my blog post. If not, I'm gonna leave all the links in the description box for you guys to the research on all the products that I suggested and also where you can buy this. This is not sponsored in any way. It's just where I have found these preservatives um, and where I've purchased them online. So again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you wanna know about how I got this bomb um, curly bang along with this um, unit here, um, check out the previous video that I made on my hibiscus and aloe vera gel, that's what's definitely make my hair shiny and curly with this U-part wig. Um, so yeah, you guys, definitely check out my other content that I have. If you have any other questions, leave them down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.